Hey everyone, and welcome to Mathematics in the Modern World. In this explainer, we're not just going to be crunching numbers, we're going to build something you can actually use, your very own data toolkit. By the end of this, you'll have three super powerful tools to make sense of any data you come across. So, let's jump right in. All right, let's dive right in with a real world problem. Just look at these 15 test scores. I mean, if someone asked you, so, how'd the class do? You wouldn't just read off all these numbers, right? That's not super helpful. We need one number, just one, that kind of sums it all up, a typical score. But how do we find that? Well, the answer is this powerful concept called measures of central tendency. Yeah, I know, it sounds super academic, but don't worry, it's really just a fancy way of saying averages. Think of them as tools that help us find the center of the group, boiling down all that messy data into one clean, meaningful number. Okay, so let's pop open that toolkit of ours and grab the very first tool. This is probably the one you're most familiar with. It's called the mean. So the mean, its nickname is the calculated average. And that's for a super simple reason. It's because that's literally what we do with it. We calculate it. And what's really cool about the mean is that it uses every single piece of data in our set. Nothing gets left behind. Okay, so how do we actually do this? It's a super simple two-step process. Step one, we just add up every single one of those 15 scores. And that big Greek letter you see there, the sigma, that's just a fancy math symbol for add it all up. Then, once we have our grand total, we go to step two. We just divide that sum by 15, which is, you know, how many scores we have. And there we have it. After you do the math, you get 90.267. So that's it. That's our mean score for this group. This number gives us a really solid single value to represent the whole class, but Here's a question. Is it the only way to find a typical score? Not even close. All right, time to reach back into our toolkit. The mean was great, but what if we don't want a calculated average? What if we want to find the score that's literally in the dead center of the group? For that, we need our second tool, the median. Yeah, the median's nickname is the middle average, and it's a perfect name because it's all about one thing, location, location, location. It's the one number that slices the data right down the middle so you have exactly half the scores above it and half the scores below it. Now to find the median, there's a first step that is absolutely critical. You can't skip this, ever. You have to arrange the scores in order first, from lowest to highest. Only after you've done that can you use the simple little formula here, n plus one divided by two. And this formula tells us the position of the middle value. So for our data, we have 15 scores, right? So that's 15 plus one divided by two, which is 16 divided by two, which equals eight. Okay, so the median is in the eighth position. But wait, this is where a lot of people make a mistake. And this brings me to a super, super important point. I'm gonna read this quote directly from our source material because it's that important. Caution, eight is not the median. It is only the position of the median. Guys, this is such a key takeaway. The formula doesn't give you the median. It just tells you where to look for the median. So let's do that right now. We go back to our nice ordered list of scores and we count one, two, three, all the way to the eighth spot. And what number is sitting there? It's 91. And that is our median, the true middle score. Okay, before we get to our third and final tool, I just wanted to press pause for a second and say a huge heartfelt thank you to everyone in our No Problem Only Solution community. Seriously, your comments and support are what make all of this possible and so much fun to do. And hey, if you're new here and you're getting some value out of this, we'd absolutely love for you to hit that subscribe button and join our class. All right, thank you for that. Now let's get back to business and pull out our last tool from the kid. This one is often the simplest one of all. It's time to meet the mode. The mode is known as the inspection average. And again, it's a great name. Why? Because you can usually find it just by inspecting the data, you know, just by looking at it. All it is is the number that appears most frequently. It's the most popular, the most common value in the whole set. So let's try it out. Take a look at our list of scores here. Can you spot it? Which number shows up more than any other? Did you find it? If you landed on 95, you nailed it. The number 95 appears three times. Sure, 87 and 93 appear twice, but 95 beats them. So our mode, the most frequent score is 95. See, pretty easy. Okay, so let's take a step back. We've got three tools and three different answers. This leads us to maybe the most important question of all. How do you know which tool is the right one for the job? Well, a lot of the time, the answer comes down to this one really important idea. 
outliers. An outlier is just an extreme score. It's either way, way higher or way, way lower than everything else. Think about it. What would happen to our mean, that calculated average, if one student totally bombed the test and got a zero instead of an 82? That one single score would pull the entire average way down. This little table here really lays it all out. So, the mean, right? Its strength is that it uses every single data point, which is good, but its big weakness is that it's really unstable. It gets totally yanked around by those outliers, but the median, it's like a rock. It is not affected by outliers at all. Think about it. If you had that zero score, would the middle position change? Nope, the median would still be 91. And that is why statisticians often love the median when they know there are extreme scores. And the mode? Well, it's awesome for finding the most popular choice, but sometimes you might not have a mode at all, or it might be a weird number that's not really in the center. And just like that, your toolkit is complete. You now have three foundational tools to help you make sense of any data set. Let's do a super quick recap to lock it in. Okay, here it is, the whole thing in a nutshell. The mean, that's your calculated average. The median, that's your true middle value and it's tough as nails against outliers. And the mode, that's just the most popular kid in the class, the most frequent value. Each one tells you a slightly different story about the center of your data. So there you have it. You've officially built your first data toolkit. And I wanna leave you with a question to think about. Now that you have these tools, what stories are you gonna find hiding in the data that's all around us every single day? This is really just the beginning of your journey. And hey, if you wanna keep building on this and add even more tools to your collection, make sure you check out the full playlist. It's called Beyond 2025, Math in the Modern World. We've got all the explainers for this course lined up for you right there. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today and I'll see you in the next one.